All right, folks, welcome back to another adventure in the garage. Today, we're going to be going over W2972 Performance Tool Digital Automotive Multimeter. This is the first multimeter I've seen that's advertised as automotive and actually has automotive specific settings that I haven't seen on any other meters. So I thought that was pretty cool. I'm going to go over some of the things that I like. It's got a great large display, very clear. Another thing that this meter is going to have that a lot most meters aren't going to have it's going to let you know where to connect your test leads it comes with a set of test leads and some clips as well as a nice owner's manual it's going to show you okay test leads need for you know we're on diode and continuity setting i need a test lead in my com and a test lead and this is the dwell voltage ohm diode and you're going to want to make sure these leads are put in there nice and snug the only time you're going to need to switch this red lead to these other two ports is going to be for measuring current or amperage this is a 200 milliamp and this is up to 10 amp and it shows you okay you need to have the test leads connected here or to here. Otherwise, all the other settings that we'll be utilizing are gonna be out of these two ports. So I, I like the large display. I like that it shows you where to connect the test leads. There is unfortunately no backlight. The only other function is this hold button and that's gonna be, you know, say you take a measurement of something. Say this nine volt battery can take my measurement. I can press hold and then it's gonna hold that value for me uh, in case I need to write it down or anything like that. We're gonna be starting at the diode continuity setting and working our way clockwise through the wheel. I'm sure a lot of you have questions about this dwell and RPM. We're gonna go into that at the end of the video and I have some visual aids to kind of help walk you through what those measurements are for. But let's go ahead and start out with our diode and continuity. Diode and continuity is gonna be pretty straightforward. We can see that our diode, the anode and cathode. The cathode is denoted by this white stripe. So our anode is going to be positive, our cathode is going to be negative, and then it's going to display the voltage drop. So this diode is showing, okay, there's about 586 millivolts of voltage drop across the diode one way, and then with our diodes, we'll always test in both directions. So I've got it swapped, and it says OL, which basically means out of limits or open. There's a few different contexts to it, but basically means there's no flow of electricity so this diode is good you can also use this to check leds the long leg of our led is going to be the anode and the short is going to be our cathode it actually puts out enough voltage to illuminate the led the voltage that's being displayed there is our forward voltage or minimum turn on voltage so this led requires you know 1.8 1.9 volts to illuminate it's going to be the symbol is for ohms or you can think of it for resistance i've got some resistance here. This meter is not an auto ranging meter. So you're going to notice for ohms, we're going to have a bunch of different ones that we can select as opposed to an auto ranging meter. If we select ohms, there's only one setting. So that can be a little confusing when you're first starting out. I've got a few different resistive values here so we can go over kind of what this might look like in case you're taking some resistive measurements and it seems a little confusing. What's going on here is basically the resolution of the measurement that we're taking. Here we have 200 ohms. This is gonna say anything from one to 200 ohms we can use for this setting. Once we get past 200 ohms, we'll wanna move to the two kilo ohms and then 20, think of this like, three places, four places, five places, six places, seven places, and eight places. That'll make a little more sense here in a minute. 200 ohm. Polarity is not going to matter for resistive measurements like it did for our diodes. Our black or our red can go on either side of the resistor and it's going to show the same result. We're taking a resistive measurement here. We're st still getting OL, but I know this resistor is good. Same for this one. Let's take a look at this last one. So this last one is at 100 ohms. Is That's trying to say I can reverse my leads. Still going to get about the same measurement. I'm getting OL for these two. What does that mean? Well, that means that it's it's outside of our resolution window. Let me start walking up. I'm at 2K ohms, still not getting any kind of display there. Let's walk it up one more time. So on the 20K setting, it's coming back and it's saying 5.5K ohms. K for kilo, think of thousands. We'll want to move that decimal over three places. We're getting one, two, imagine there's a zero here. This means 5,510 ohms, or for shorthand, we can just say, 
PSA 5.5 kilo ohms. For our next one, getting an OL again. We either have bad resistor, the resistor is open, or we're not within the right resolution setting. I can walk this up, 200K. You'll see the M here, that's for mega, so think of millions. I'm showing one mega ohm. Think of one million ohms. And then if I go past its resolution window, you can see I have space available for, you know, say if this was a 15 mega ohm resistor, it would be able to display one, five point, you know, zero, three or whatever. But that's why there's these different settings is for different resolutions, different accuracies in the display. So you'll want to keep an eye on that upper right hand corner for if we're in mega or kilo or just normal ohms. I'm going to pay attention to so you don't get confused while you're troubleshooting. Now it's going to be a similar story with our voltage. Most of us are going to be using this because most car systems are going to be a 12 or 5 volt system. We're going to use this 20 volts DC. That's what the solid and dash line is there to indicate. Also notice it's still saying, hey, have your leads in that spot. Let's say I've got a 12 volt battery. I want to look at its charge. Now for DC voltage measurements, the polarity of our leads is going to matter. Okay. So we're going to want to do red to power, black to common. I'm getting 13.28. Now it's important to remember with cars and batteries, fully charged lead acid battery is going to come back about 12.7. This is not a lead acid battery. This is a lithium ion phosphate battery. That's why it's showing, even though it's a 12 volt battery, it's showing a bit higher. Now this is a good way to get a sense of state of charge, but not state of health. If you take a measurement with your battery on the volt setting and you're seeing 12.7, yeah, that means it's fully charged, but you don't know the health state of that battery. That's when you're going to want to do a loaded voltage test for that. Let's go ahead and move on to our next setting is going to be volts AC. Our leads are there and we have different resolutions. It's also handy for your house wiring. So I'm on two volts AC. I've got 120 volt supply. It's saying OL out of limits. If I go to 20, same story. If I go to 200. Now I can see I've got 118 volts AC available to me. So that's how that works. Next, we're going to go into amperage measurements. Amperage measurements are going to be a little bit different because we got to measure current or amperage in series with our circuit. What does that mean? Well, that means that we're going to use the meter itself essentially as a jumper wire to complete the circuit and then that way we can measure current so we've got two different current settings here we've got 200 milliamps of current and then we've got 10 amps notice when we adjust our settings i go to that 200 milliamp setting it's telling me hey i need to connect my leads like this that has to do with the internals of the meter and the way that it's set up something to look at is it says 200 milliamps max fuse. So if you exceed that rating, there's a fuse in here that's going to blow. The 200 milliamp setting is great for measuring very accurate, very small currents, which in our typical automotive analog setting will be rare, but I'm sure you could find uses for it. I'm going to use my leads as jumpers to complete the circuit to take my measure in. So I'm showing two milliamps of current is being drawn here. If you have your leads backwards, the polarity opposite, this will happen on DC measurements too, you're going to see a negative sign pop up. All that's saying is the flow of electrons is reversed from what you think it's going to be. Just means your polarity is backwards. 2.1 milliamps. So that's a very, very small amount of current and that's very accurate current measurement. For going up to something a bit bigger, something that will probably more likely be trying to measure the current draw of is something like an incandescent bulb. An LED will probably have a small current draw like that if you've upgraded your lighting system or something like that. Generally, your headlights are going to be these incandescent bulbs that are probably going to draw at least a couple of amps. So if we're in a scenario where we keep popping a fuse, can use this amperage measurement to see how much current the system is trying to draw and why that fuse isn't working. I'm going to be setting this to the 10 amp DC setting. That's going to show us, hey, we need to connect our leads like this. So I'm going to take my red lead, pop it over to there so it matches. Now I can measure up to 10 amps before the fuse in here blows. 
we can see that this incandescent bulb is pulling about two amps of current well below what our meter is rated for we can also see that if we switch our leads around this bulb will still light but we're getting that negative sign saying the polarity of our leads is backwards current draw and troubleshooting that's what that's going to be used for now on to the car specific settings so far all of the settings that we've gone over this is diode continuity resistive volts dc volts ac all that you're going to find on just about any modern digital multimeter available to you these other two i haven't seen on any other meter and they're automotive specific so first we're going to go over your dwell angle i don't have an older or classic car to demonstrate these on but i am going to do my best to explain them so that if you are fine-tuning your vehicle and you happen to have this meter and you want a better understanding of what is going on we can show you you have a dwell setting on your meter this is specific for distributed vehicles we have four cylinder six cylinder eight cylinder imagine a circle 360 degrees divided by four six or eight so for four we have 90 degrees six cylinders we have 60 degrees and eight cylinders 45 degrees an example i have here is for a four cylinder engine we have four distributor cam lobes now we have our point and our point gap you're probably going to be familiar with that and that's something that you can adjust with a feeler gauge measuring dwell electronically is going to give us really accurate readings for when our points are closed that's what the meter is going to measure if we're broken down into 90 degrees and we're getting a reading on here on our four cylinder of 52 degrees that means that our points are open for 38 degrees this is going to be really handy because it's going to let you know how long the points are closed for each cylinder that's firing and we can get really accurate measurements and know if some of the cylinders are having longer points closed than others and then there should be a specification within the manual of your dwell period or how long your point is closed for each cylinder i hope that makes sense a very handy setting usually it's going to be a separate meter but this one is built into it and then we have i thought this was really cool this is for measuring rpm again this is going to be older classic cars before the digital age and so i've got some examples here now it's going to be specific you could have custom wiring in there there could be a whole bunch of different things going on so just take this with a grain of salt as generic examples black lead is going to go to a good ground and then your red lead is going to go to wherever your tack signal is coming off of could be the negative side of your ignition coil depending on if you have an msd system this green wire here or from your distributor TAC terminal. What this will be handy for if you're setting your ignition timing and you're trying to get the RPMs in a very specific range, this way you can hook up your meter to your TAC signal. You can monitor what your RPMs are at. It's for, and it has settings for four, six, or eight cylinders. You can monitor, okay, I want my RPMs at 3,000, 2,500 RPMs. I can have my meter read that TAC signal and then I can go ahead and adjust my timing. For fine tuning your dwell and your ignition timing, this meter has some great settings. So I hope that makes sense. I hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comment section and I'll try to get you sorted out. Thanks for joining me in another adventure in the garage. I'll check you on the next one.